Welcome to making a Stuart Model steam plant. This one is part 39. The first live steam test of the Stuart Model's double 10 V steam engine and also testing my renovated Scott's return tube boiler. In a previous episode one of the pistons came loose so I removed both pistons then refitted them very tightly. After this operation I noticed that one of the split o-ring gland packings that had fitted was on the bench and it was damaged. What you're looking at at the moment is a bent piece of welding wire from my MIG welder. I used this piece of wire with the bent end to pull out any of the gland packing that was left in place. And after that I cut another couple of o-rings. This handy tip about splitting silicone o-rings and using them as gland packing is not my idea. It was Don English of Jubilee Fittings who suggested it to me many years ago and it seems to work very well. I repacked both of the stuffing glands on the cylinders using the method that I'm showing in the video. I gently rotated the crankshaft to put some pressure on the gland nut and re-tightened it using this method. To initially fit the split o-ring to the piston rod I used a small pair of surgical forceps. A very useful tool for using in workshops and operating theatres. I never did have a C-spanner to fit these gland nuts I just use a screwdriver and lever the part back into place. This method works quite well, you can lever against the side of the column. You do not need to use a hammer. With the engine back together it was time to run it on compressed air just to make sure that nothing was too tight and everything seemed to be ok. Before running the engine like this on compressed air I applied plenty of oil to the piston rods. The engine is still a little bit on the tight side, particularly the valve gear aspect of it is, but all the time it's getting looser. Running on compressed air is very convenient as the engine doesn't get hot, but there comes a time when it needs to have a steam test. As the Stuart 504 boiler that's going to be used in the plant is not ready yet, I thought it would be a good idea to test this boiler that I renovated recently. It's a Scotch return tube boiler and it's really good. The first thing I need to do is half fill the boiler with water. After removing the safety valve I just use a funnel connected to a piece of silicone rubber tubing. I've opened the steam tap to release the air as I fill the boiler. Today I have a bit of a minor problem. I've lost the adapter that I made to fit my large camping gas cylinder so I'm going to have to use a couple of small gas canisters. And the problem is they are almost empty, so I'm only filling the boiler halfway up the glass. My apologies if this is a bit of a short steam test, but there will be another one when I find my gas tank adapter. I fitted this valve to a suitable canister with some gas in it. And as I've just mentioned, both of the canisters are quite empty. And even though this is a propane-butane mix, I don't think there's too much propane left in the mix as the pressure is very low. Here I've moved the gas burner into the correct position and lit it. The smoke you can see is coming from the paint owing to the heat of the burner. In this clip I'm testing this water gauge. I love these water gauges, I think they're definitely the best out there. The position of the burner is critical. If I move it too close to the boiler it howls. So I just pull it back a little bit to let a bit more air in and then everything's fine. While the boiler was warming up I made this very simple part to connect the steam tap to a piece of silicone rubber tubing to supply steam to the engine. And I used another piece of silicone rubber tubing to connect the check valves together to stop them from dripping. No sign of any steam yet. It's time to fill the displacement lubricator. This is a brand new Stuart displacement lubricator. I'm filling it using steam cylinder oil which is very viscous. Do not use motor oil, machine oil or anything else other than steam cylinder oil which is specially designed for lubricating steam cylinders either via a displacement lubricator or a mechanical lubricator. It's a long time since I filled a new displacement lubricator and it took a surprisingly long time to fill up. Although I haven't shown it, I opened the valve on the displacement lubricator one full turn. Still no steam, the gas pressure is very low, but it's a good time to lubricate the engine. Should I say lubricate, I really meant absolutely flood the engine with oil. 
By the time the plant is complete, this engine will be run in, but at the moment it's quite tight. That's why I'm applying quite a lot of lubricating oil. This is not steam cylinder oil, this is general steam engine lubricating oil. I buy it from a company called Hallett Oils, and that's Hallett Oils with two L's and two T's. The good news is, there's about £30 per square inch of steam in the boiler. I will use this to warm up the engine. I've opened the steam tap on the boiler and I'm gently rotating the crankshaft just to clear the water. I haven't bothered opening the steam taps on the engine because they really do make a mess and they leak anyway. The engine is reluctant to start because there isn't enough pressure and there's also a lot of water in the steam line. I noticed fairly bad leaks from both of the valve rod glands so I tightened them up. And surprisingly there's a bit of a leak from around the flange on the exhaust side but leaks like this are insignificant. After a while the engine starts to run, but it's not running very smoothly, but that's not the fault of the engine. I rebuilt this boiler and it spent quite a lot of time in my acid bath, and at the moment it's priming. This will improve after it's been run a few times. As the temperature of the boiler rises and the steam pressure gets a bit higher, the engine starts to run a lot better. The priming is still a bit of a problem though, because the water is being carried out of the boiler and down the steam pipe. In this clip I'm just tweaking the other gland nut on the valve rod. I'm quite pleased with the way the engine's performing, it's only running at about £20 per square inch. Unfortunately the gas is running out rapidly, and because of the priming the water level in the boiler is dropping rapidly too, but the good news is there's still a bit of water left and £40 per square inch on the clock. And that's it for the narration. At the end of the video you will see me running the engine using compressed air, first of all to blow away the water, then I put some WD-40 in there, followed by some steam oil. That's it from me. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.